Hey, what's up you guys? It's Simon. Welcome back to my channel. And again, my windows are open. It's raining. You know me. There's gonna be a little bit of noise. But, like I said in the last few videos, it's summer, spring, sort of, whatever. I'm craving fresh air, and therefore, I am going to get it in whatever way that I possibly can. I'm an artist, I'm cooped up in my room all day, let me have this. <laughs> okay, so for today, I decided it would be fun to show you guys one of the prints that I've been working on. I know I mentioned it in the, um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video, but I know I mentioned it several times on my Instagram. I'm actually trying to get into a local convention of mine. It's, um really really special to me it's actually number one the first convention i ever went to and number two the convention where i met my husband so if i can make everything come full full circle i guess and then be an artist alley seller there that would be amazing so yeah i've been working on um quite a few things actually for this convention so there's this print that i'll be talking about shortly and um, a couple more, you guys have seen some um, snapshots on my Instagram, I have some My Hero prints in the works, I have one Naruto print, um, and I actually turned that Twitch banner that I made for my little brother into a print, I, it obviously doesn't have all the Twitch stuff, I just took the peach and then refined it a little bit more and threw in some mushrooms in the background that I thought would make it look really cute, so there's a little bit of um, a Nintendo theme going on there. And um, I'm also planning to sell some originals, but the main thing that I've been super excited about besides these prints because I am so, so proud of how they came out. I'm actually like super shocked. Like um, a lot of them I did full bodies, this one included, and I'm so not used to doing full bodies. I did make it one of my New Year's resolutions to force myself to do that more, and it has helped me so much i think with forcing myself to learn proportions and figure out things like that although mermaid isn't helping because <laughs> there's no legs so um haven't been drawing too many full bodies outside of um these prints so uh once mermaid is over though i'll be back to forcing myself to try and do that and then the next thing i'm gonna tackle is perspectives uh, because i'm like literally i'm so bad with perspective like i always just have people dead on either staring left or right on a flat background or a slightly detailed background but it's always head on so perspective is our next objective <laughs> anyways like i said the most thing <laughs> wow the thing i'm most excited for are these little charms that i'm making um i've seen so many people do enamel pins and i'm so into that look i think they're really really cool um, everybody has them like on their backpacks and their hoodies and their uh, hats or whatever. I wanted to make enamel pins, but I did not have any idea where I could possibly have enamel pins made, nor did I know how to go about designing an enamel pin. So first off, if you have any suggestions, leave it down in the comments so I can try them out next time because I really, this, this has been such a painstaking process. Um, so what I did instead, in order to achieve the sort of enamel pin look, is I made shrinky dinks. And you might be thinking, um, Simon, shrinky dinks aren't that hard. You just color and then put it in the oven. But no, no, I didn't do that. I decided that I was going to only do the line art, only bake the line art, and then paint them which was such a terrible idea because they're so freaking teensy tiny. I didn't even think about it. I was painting things in with a toothpick because I was like, oh, well, I can't use color pencils because the colors are going to be wrong and because um, it's not going to be right once it's baked because, like, obviously... The only color pencils I have are a few Prisma colors that don't really have um, a skin tone-ish range, and then Crayola pencils, which certainly don't have skin tones. So um, yeah, I was like, well, I'm better off baking them and then painting them after they come out. And while it did work, it was incredibly annoying. I I painted the whole batch of Naruto's and Deku's last night and my body hurts like I'm in so much pain 
but I'm so proud of how these little dudes are coming out. They're so cool. And then obviously, I didn't want to just sell shrinky dinks because like, hello, like that's a baby project. So I did amp them up a little bit, obviously with the painting, but I also did um, something stupid and I decided I was going to cast them in resin. So um, they're like sort of like enamel, but not really, but they are like definitely more durable than just a shrinky dink. I did put like protective layers on there so that the details would stay and that you wouldn't have to worry about the pin fading away. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i really proud of how they're coming out. They're really cool. I've done some test ones and by that I mean they were not initially a test. Um, I did like, I have one for Naruto, one for Sasuke, one for Deku, and one for Bakugo. And um, I also had two, like, um, not series specific, but sort of still um, alludes to those two series. So for um, Naruto, I have just like the leaf village symbol, 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 and it's like a circle that's surrounded by two leaves. And then for um, my hero, I made like a Todoroki popsicle. And for that, I did like, um, I'm sure you guys have seen like during summer those like double popsicles and so his whole thing is that he's like icy hot He's like split in half So I thought it would be fun to do one side of the popsicle That's like light blue and a little bit freezer burned and the other side of the popsicle That's like super red um, like a gradient from like dark purple red all the way up to right right red bright red that's dripping but um, I messed all of them up <laughs> They look so bad. They're really dirty. It's because um I did this method where I would paint like a whole chunk and then uh, I would scrape off the remaining paint that was outside of the line work with a toothpick. But for some reason, I decided that I would paint it all red and then go to sleep and then wake up and scrape it off. And by then it was on there so hard. It was like that method only works when it's sort of dry and it was just rock hard. And so I was scraping and scraping and they look so dirty. And the only one that came out looking good is the one I messed up. I made the icy part, the melted part. And I was like, how did I not realize this as I was painting? Thank you, car. But anyways, so like I said, um, yeah, I, the only one that came out good, I ended up messing up. So I think I'm just going to sell that one for a little bit cheaper. Also, um, if you guys have seen the progress of these prints and these pins, keep in mind that I might not get into the convention. This is all prep to, um, potentially apply to the convention. And if I don't get in, if you guys like the designs, let me know if I should like open up an Etsy or something and do prints and sell these pins on there because um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with the hours and hours and hours of work that I have put in if I don't get into this convention. But anyways, so let us get into the actual print itself. So I'm sure you guys have already seen this is like um, a sort of girl gang-esque print. I'm sure all of you guys have seen on like Etsy and Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram and wherever of people turning these sort of like soft magical girl trope into like these really strong tough girls and most especially with Sailor Moon and I am not an exception because I love that aesthetic. I think it's super super cool and so I wanted to do something similar with that for this print so it does say like um, I don't know if it says it yet but um, I made it say like magical girl and then gang at the bottom and all three of them are in matching leather jackets in um, I guess right no left to right order it's supposed to be madoka from madoka magica um obviously sailor moon and then on the end is uh i've i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest i've never seen card captor sakura i don't I've, i don't know who she is i'm assuming her name is sakura it please kill me if it's not but like um yeah like i said i've never seen card captor sakura i could not think of another um, magical girl that was something that I'd experienced before or would make sense to have with these three and my brother suggested that I put her on there so I did so again if her name isn't Sakura grill me in the comments I'm sorry but yeah um 
I basically put the three most prevalent um, magical girls in my and my immediate families. <laughs> um, not imagination, but like um, association, I guess, with magical girls. And um, especially Sailor Moon, not just because like Sailor Moon was like super popular, but because Sailor Moon actually has like a really special place in my heart, I guess. Um, I know I don't talk about it that often, but Sailor Moon, it might have been my first anime like before Naruto. I'm really not sure. Um, it was probably around the same time as I had started getting into anime. But the way I found Sailor Moon was um, I had this best friend when I lived in my house as a kid before I moved and she, um, I think it was like one of my first sleepovers like ever because I was a very shy kid and so I didn't usually want to go and spend the night at people's houses but she offered to spend the night at my house and because she lived like literally directly across from me I was like okay cool so that uh, if I got too anxious then if something were to happen if I were to freak out or something she could just go home like it's literally right across the street it's not a problem so um, when she came over, she actually brought, like, stuff for us to do, so she brought, like, games and stuff, obviously, but she also brought Sailor Moon, not Sailor Moon Crystal, Sailor Moon, like, the OG, um, and she, like, played that for all of us, I must have been, like, I have no idea, I was anywhere between, like, 7 to 10 years old, that's why I'm not sure if this was my first anime, because I got into Naruto when I was 7, so, um, yeah, she brought Sailor Moon over and I was like enthralled. I like literally lost my mind. All the visual, visuals, all the visuals, the storylines, and the fact that it was also subbed and not dubbed. So I was like, I was like low key a little confused because it was in Japanese and I was a little kid, but I was like, I, it's still really cool. I, I don't totally know what's happening, but I like all the colors. The characters are really cool. And then once I started like, sort of um adjusting to the fact that it was in japanese and needing to read the subtitles i was like whoa this show is so good and so it was one of my first animes ever and i really since this was my first anime convention i definitely wanted to sort of pay tribute to one of the things that got me into anime and thus like into conventions and such so i definitely wanted to put sailor moon in there and then obviously i put mud Madoka, I don't know how to say her name, it's probably Madoka, I don't know, but um, I put her in there because I, <laughs> Madoka Magica made me cry, like I literally sobbed my eyes out, I finished it in maybe a span of two days, probably one day, but <laughs> let's be hopeful and say it was two days, I, that story was beautiful, the characters were amazing, the storyline, everything was just killing me, um, I, like, I couldn't get over that show for a solid, like, month. It, like, really affected me, and I was like, I love this show so much. And, um, especially the ending, like, if you've never seen Madoka Magica, I'm crying right now <laughs> thinking about it. Like, it's so devastating, but it's also at the same time, it's, like, sort of happy when you consider the alternative. So, um, yeah, I, I loved Madoka Magica. It was amazing, and so I had to put her in there. And plus, when you think Magical Girl, other than Sailor Moon, she's probably one of the first that you think of. And then the last one I put was Cardcaptor Sakura because, like I said, I couldn't think of any other Magical Girls, but I wanted it to be, like, a three-girl, like, I almost said three-girl duo. Are you kidding me? <laughs> a trio of, like, these really tough girls. And, uh, like I said, my little brother suggested that I do the girl from Cardcaptor Sakura, so I did include her in there. And then, um, the next thing that I wanted to do was I wanted them all to have a matching patch. And I was like, hmm, what do I do? So I went to my husband and I sent, like, I sent him with three girls. I was like, it's Madoka, Sailor Moon, and the girl from, um, Cardcaptor Sakura can you make me like a patch design that would combine like all three of their elements and so he found one of the three most iconic things from the show aka mostly their wands and then uh, incorporated it into one patch design so it has the wings that i believe are from cardcaptor sakura the moon from um sailor moon and then i think the stars from madoka magica and then i just sort of 
went with whatever color scheme that I wanted, but I was so impressed by like the design that he made. I thought it was super cool. I might make stickers of just the um, patch because I thought it was awesome. I also originally wanted the patch to say Magical Girl Gang as well, but then I figured like, um, no, because then it's like I have it written three times because obviously Madoka, I also, by the way, wanted their uh, patch to be in three different places because I didn't want everything to get like too repetitive. I wanted to show some like unique characteristics in all three of them. So for Madoka, obviously hers is on her um, chest and then Usagi's is on her back and then um, the girl from Card Capture Sakura has hers on a t-shirt. Um, but yeah, I wanted to put the Magical Girl Gang all around the patches, but then I figured one, no, because then I have to um, figure out how to arrange the text in three different places at three different angles. And then two, also, it's a lot to read and um, it's going to be a print. It's going to be a relatively small part of the print and therefore I felt like it would be sort of cluttered. So I moved the text to the top and bottom because I felt like that would read a lot better. But um, if I do make stickers of the patch, I probably will put it on the patch just so that it makes sense. Like it's not just like this thing floating in space. Um, and then yeah, I originally was going to go for blue line art, as you can see obviously from the um, initial drawing, but I decided against doing blue line art because after I finished it, I was just like, the line art stands out way too much. Like, I was sort of going for the look that I did when I, um, made that, like, I made a joke that this was, like, the Instagram aesthetic where, um, I had, like, a girl taking, like, a mirror selfie and she had, like, a bunny phone case or something and the line art was blue and she was in, like, this pastel little outfit and it... It really blew up. People liked that post so much and I was like, this was not the point. The point was that I, like, this is the kind of stuff that blows up. I was making fun of it, not because I don't like it, but because it's something that I see all the time. Obviously, I love that look. That's why I was going for it again, but um, it kind of made me laugh that I was, like, sort of poking fun at the trope and then, of course, it, like, blew up on my page and I was like, aww, mm, y'all missed the point. But I do really like that look. I just thought it was funny that it was like, if you search like cute Instagram drawing, that's what you're going to find. So again, I was going for um, some blue line art and it just was like, it was sticking out way too much. I know I went with ultramarine. I could have went with like navy or something, but I felt like, uh, I don't know. I felt like with all the pastels that it was just like too harsh and I hate black line art like um <laughs> I'll use it sometimes and in some um drawings like obviously I talked about previously that um I there's so many things that I don't like oh I guess I talked about it in the stream by the way I stream now um I stream on Twitch on Sundays and Wednesdays um 3 p.m CST on Sundays and 6 p.m CSTs on Wednesday <laughs> wow 6 p.m. CST on Wednesdays, so if you guys want to catch me live or watch me draw something or if you want to sneak a request in because more than likely if you have a request I will do it on stream because I don't know what else to do when I'm on stream. I will be more than happy to do that. You can check me out on Twitch, same name there, Simon AES Arts, just like I am on everything. But anyways, so um, back to what I was saying. Um, what was I saying? I totally forgot. Oh yeah, the blue line art. Um, I I was saying in the stream that there's so many things that other artists do that I love so much, but when I try to emulate it in my art, I get so picky. I'm like, oh, I hate how that looks. That looks so bad. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Like I just said, I hate black line art, but then I'll watch people like Casey Golden and Drawing With Waffles and their line art is beautiful. It's, it's just when I do it, I don't like it. So I went with colored line art similar to what I did with my My Hero prints and I basically just tried to soften it out a little bit and I'm so, so hyped for how this came out. I'm like really, really proud of this drawing. Um, obviously I love these characters apart from like the Sakura girl. I don't know her, but I'm sure she's great. <laughs> um, uh, but I love the idea. I love the meaning that it has, obviously, some of my first animes possibly going to be selling them at the first con that I ever went to, and it would be my first time ever selling at a convention, so 
lots of firsts with this print and it was just something that was really fun to make and really made me happy. I really, I think I spent the most time on this print because I was just so picky with every little step. Like you'll see, um, from the sketch, I put it somewhere up in the corner at the beginning. I actually started this out in Procreate, but I like, I did Usagi's face like four million times and then I moved it over to Sai on my desktop and messed with it even more. And then I decided that I didn't like that at all moved it back into Procreate, did even more sketching, and then I settled on the line art. So everything was like very particularly done with this piece and I'm so, so proud of it. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about it and also if you would like to see stickers and um, whatever else you wanna leave me. Obviously, I'm still really small so I can read every single comment that you guys send me. Um, and that goes for DMs too. If you want to talk to me on Instagram, I've said this before, go ahead. I don't get that many DMs. Like, don't let the 3K scare you. I literally get, like, on average, four DMs a week. So please, if you want to say something, go ahead. I will be happy to talk to you if you have questions, if you have, like, just even random things you want to talk about. I am so there and I will so listen to you. So I guess that is it for this week's video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. And don't forget, you can check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Simon AES Arts. If you subscribe to my Sprout tier, which by the way, I realized that I've been saying my Patreon tiers wrong in like most of my videos. I think I've been saying my Bud tier, which is um, I believe my $10 tier, a little bit more expensive than the Sprouts. The shout out tier is actually only $5 a month and you can get really cool stuff like I said these shout outs on my Saturday videos but you can also get um, things like wallpapers and exclusive polls things like that so please feel free go check out my patreon again that's patreon.com slash Simon AES arts and I would like to give a big shout out to my first patron Elise Thompson for continuing to support me and I love y'all so so much don't forget to like comment subscribe share this video with your friends it really helps me out and I will see you guys next Saturday